you all welcome to the mental house first but i hope that you all have acknowledged mental health aware of uh, awareness month it should be mental health awareness day every day because as a nation we are getting sicker and sicker and unless we really begin to acknowledge our mental health issue as a sick nation, I don't think we can ever heal. I'm not saying that it's our fault we inherited this craziness. However, it still has to be addressed. So, with that being said, I want y'all to take a few minutes, if you haven't already, and acknowledge, at least think about your mental health. You know, and um, make sure you stay on point with that. Because it's really easy to get off track. It's a thin line between sane and insane. Trust you me. But this next story, family, is um, a story that I'm going to try to get Veronica Melton on here. We've conversed, but I lost kind of contact with her because my brother was killed. Uh, during the time of this trial. Now, I know that Wendell Melton is found guilty of killing his 14-year-old son because his son was gay. Okay? Now, I don't know how much time he got, but I hope to God that he got life in prison because nothing else will satisfy me. He shouldn't see the light of day again. Okay, because anytime you kill somebody over their sexuality, you are so underdeveloped. You are so underdeveloped as a human being that um, it's hard to have a decent conversation with you. Private business, private parts. Why did they call it private? Because really, it's, it's your business, and it's not nobody else's business. And the only way you would have a problem with it is that you're not sure about who in the hell you are. Because why would somebody else's sexuality offend me? Why would somebody else's preference of a sexual partner... What the hell does that got to do with me? So when you call people names because of their sexuality, I already know what time it is. When you start calling me names or saying things, I'm done with you. And I'm done with it because it's like you're crazy. You you know different than a white person on you and attacking you because you're black. It's no different. And until, especially in a black community, until we get right, until we see ourselves as those wretched people that like to attack people that we feel as different or less than like uh like like the dominant society does us then really we ain't never going to be kissed by God not in a real sense and I don't care what some of these fools say because I think there's a scripture that says something to the effect of if my people who are called by my name 
would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then will I, I heal their land. Okay? Now, just that part, that doesn't mean I'm a Bible thumper. It doesn't mean all that because the Bible is so full of contradictions and crazy. But I'm just saying that truth postulate is true. If you pray about some things and if you think about a little deeper about, and I call praying, meditation, whatever, and if you think a little deeper about some things, then it seems like you will question something and see a gray area as opposed to down and out, black and white, and if you're not like me or if I don't like what you do, I'm going to kill you. And so... This is the story of Wendell Melcher. Okay, and just the fact that as a parent, I can't imagine somebody shooting my child because of their sexuality. I can't imagine. But it happens, and it happened to this woman. Her husband killed their son, their son over his sexuality. And I'm going to let the news say it, because at least I don't have the visual. Y'all can hear the audio. Raiders fans, Terrible's Game Day giveaway is back. And we're teaming up with Coors Light. Well, that's, that's not it. Go for the extra points for the Coors Light. Scan your Terrible's app for more code. I'm sorry, you guys. So sorry. You know how I do. So this this story is one of the saddest damn stories. And I wanna it's just a a little clip. Because I'm Veronica, I'm reaching out to you and I'm hoping that if you're still a subscriber, that you would definitely get in touch with me. Because I like to follow through on some of these stories. And I, I wasn't able to follow through on what happened with your son. The killer of your son. I hope he got life in prison. However, I'm not sure. Because Melton, and that, if I remember at the time, he was claiming, the dad was claiming that it was accidental. Okay? Even though he was homophobic, he's called his son's name doing all types of stuff like that, making the son extremely uncomfortable, okay? And then the son gets killed by him. In fact, um, Wendell Melton was arrested in 2017, and that's when I first did the story, in the shooting death of his 14-year-old son, Giovanni Melton. The jury rightfully found Wendell guilty on all counts of murder. And according to a arrest report, Wendell claimed Giovanni attacked him and the shooting was accidental. Giovanni's mother, Veronica Melton, said for her, justice would be in the case if he got life in prison. Nothing less than that um, would satisfy her because she knows that this guy is telling a damn lie. And her son did not attack him. He didn't attack him at all. He was being For attacked. Arrest. For better. So check it out. Just check the story out. Let me let them talk about the it. The man arrested for the murder of his son over his sexuality has been found guilty. Wendell Melton was arrested in 2017 in the shooting death of his 14-year-old son, Giovanni Melton. According to an arrest report, Melton claimed Giovanni attacked him and the shooting was accidental. We spoke to Giovanni's mother about the case last week. She says justice in the case for her would be life in prison. Today, a jury found Melton guilty on all counts. They will return to court tomorrow for the penalty phase. And what disturbs me so much about this story is there a, is a prominent assistant minister at one of these mega churches here in Milwaukee where I I live and I'm not going to call out the minister or the church 
the fact of the matter is he has a son that's transgender. And every chance he gets, if he sees his son outside, this is a so-called minister now. He runs up on his son. He tries to beat him on the streets. He tried to run him over with a car. He said because nothing that he produced is going to be acting like that. And it's an abomination to God and all this other kind of biblical craziness. Okay. Because all I heard and all I can remember is the only requirement Jesus had for us to do was to love one another. And that means if we could love one another, we would change all this shit. But we can't. Because there were some players a long time ago that figured out that mistrust was stronger than trust. That, you know, um, a lie was easier to believe than the truth. And they played on it. That aspect of human nature, they played on. So with this guy right here, they killed his son because of his sexuality. As a parent, I can't fathom it. And um, my heart goes out to, I believe the mother's name was Veronica. And I, I don't know Cause that's something you never get over. But I hope she's doing well. And um, I pray for her. I have not forgotten this story. And I always wanted to do a follow-up. Follow so I'm hoping that I can be in touch with her. Um, so she can talk about her son, his innocence, his life that was taken away from him by somebody that she wants loved. And in my opinion, black people with their homophobia is just ridiculous. You know, and it's at the point where the dominant society dumps on them so they gotta find somebody to dump on. And so they found the gay community. What somebody does in their private life has got nothing to do with me. So when you leave messages on my Facebook page or my, you know, um, YouTube calling me names and, th and think that I still have a conversation for you, the things of that nature, I don't because I realize that you operate on a low level, for real, emotionally and mentally. Because what you do in your bedroom has got nothing to do with me. What I do in my bedroom has nothing to do with you. And whatever you think about me, unless you've experienced it with me, you really don't have nothing to say. That's my personal business. Just like anybody else out here that's got personal business. But what happens as a black community, we want to run and jump and dab into people's sexual lives as if that's got anything to do with us, as if that's paying a bill for us. As if that's moving us out of poverty. <laughs> and it's freaking ridiculous. Because at the end of the day, we're all black. Okay? And we are still oppressed. Whether you're black, brown, you know. You see what I'm saying? What does your sexuality have to do with any of that? Something that you probably spend 10 to 15 minutes doing. What does that have to do with your whole life? And what you do to other time of the day. So I, I, it lets me further know how ignorant you are. And that's why I couldn't speak with the the minister, the assistant minister from, from the church, because there's nothing you can say to me. You're a fool. You're a whole fool if you would run your child down in the street because his sexuality. Dude, I don't have nothing to say to you. You're too stupid for me. And that's how I feel with mo about, about most black people that are extremely homophobic. Unless somebody try to force their lifestyle on you, try to molest you, it's, it should be none of your business what they do. I don't spend time even thinking about what nobody does in their bedroom. Gay, straight, or whatever. I don't think about nothing like that. That ain't my business. 
And for this man to have killed his, his own son because he couldn't control who he was. Y'all, that's an atrocity. That's an atrocity. And I'm really sick of it. At the end of the day, I'm done. With black folk and their homophobia. I'm done. And when you go to any church USA. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> and when you go to any church. That's your choir director. Your organist. Your pianist. Your usher. Come on now. Then you want to play this fake hypocritical game. Oh, I ain't gay. I let him suck my dick, but I ain't gay. I mean, black people, ain't you tired of losing everything? Ain't you tired of being on the bottom of the totem pole with everything? And now you have no love for humanity when at first you had all the love for it? And every time I see and think about this story and this woman losing her 14-year-old son, it's absolutely insane. Maybe it's just me. I always say, why am I straight? Why am I in this mental house? Just give me a bunch of drugs, okay? Because it's just as crazy when you're in that world as it is when you're in this real world. I mean, seriously. So, I don't know. Tell me what you think. Am I going too far? Anyway, God bless you. And my condolences go out to you still, Veronica. And I'm praying for you. And I'm hoping to be in touch with you. That maybe you can share. If enough time has passed. That maybe you can share some of this stuff with the listeners of the, and the subscribers of the mental house. So thank you very much. And um, for the rest of y'all, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. I'll see you in the next video.